Have you ever been on a server or downloaded a map from the marketplace and thought, man, I wish I could have something like that in my world? Well, me too. I'm Mr. B Rates One, and this is my brand new series, MC Map Faker. Come join me on this adventure as we try to make our very own map in Minecraft. And with the help of my silent assistant here, we are going to try and implement things for play accounts, NPC support, managing lobbies, and much, much more. Please like and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell to be kept up to date on the series. Hello, and we are back once again in our map faker world. Now today, ooh, now today we are going to be looking at lobby and exit control. So in the last episode, we saw a brief, brief glimpse at this place, the mage. So this, this is going to be the first game that we are going to add into our map faker world. Now, as you can see here, I do have an outline to define the area of where the mage is going to be. It's not going to be absolutely massive. Obviously, at the end of the day, this is going to be one of the first games that players come in into and play. So I don't want them to be in here forever. We're going to have a lobby here and an exit over there. And the idea is they can enter this area, play the maze, and then exit over there. So underneath the world then, as you can see by the floor pattern, this is where the lobby is. We have some command blocks there, which we'll take a look at in a minute. We have the exit command blocks over here. Oh, let's just get rid of that. We don't need that there. So the main bolt then of the actual lobby control is just these sets of command blocks here. This line... And this line here is just for the actual maintenance. And then these two will be what will actually track the statistics for the main lobby as well. So as you can see, we've got this chain here. Create maze lobby. It's the, what I've called this chain. I'm going to remove one over here. So if I just remove it in a minute, just to make sure any old reminiscence of it is gone, so I can show you. So in here then, it's just exactly the same. We've covered this before in a different one. Simply creating a scoreboard objective. Maze lobby dummy is what we're going to call it. And then we're going to create another one called Maze Stats. This is what's actually going to be displayed on the screen. And as you can see there, we've added a nice little colour and stuff like that, just to give it a nice sort of appeal to it. And now here, we'll set the sidebar. So at the minute on the sidebar, as you can see, we've got the players online count. So for the purpose of testing, I've put this in here so that when we create this, we can actually see the scoreboard and then we can see how the statistics of the game works. So you're probably thinking, why are we doing this with the lobby and that control? Well, the way most of the things are going to work here is that it's all going to be controlled by these statistics. All these statistics will control what the game will do because this maze isn't just going to be a normal maze. I actually want to make this maze change based on the number of players that play it. So over time, the levels will change. So let's say, for example, um, you get 20 players that play in the maze in total. By this point, these 20 players, you know, they're all quite attuned to where they need to go. They know exactly what they need to do. So they're going to come and they're going to earn the credits very, very easy. Uh, the tokens very, very easy. But I don't want that to happen. So I am creating different levels of the maze so that after so many players have played, it will change. And there'll be a different maze. And then again, and again, and again. And all of that will be controlled by the statistics from this. So, where we be before? So that's what sets it on the screen. And again, this is just what configures how things look. So we initially define the commands. We've done this before in the different ones. It's exactly the same things. And then we, what we're doing is we're adding players to the actual scoreboard, which will hold all the information. So you can see like all-time player counts actual playing count there oh wrong screen in the lobby there so what this is this is all of these here this just defines what it looks like on the screen we'll see that in a minute when we click it and then i've created another one there which will get used for the actual lobby control over there so if we just click this button and there we go so what we've done is that we've set up this set of command blocks over here now that can track the players in this lobby area. We've set up this command block here. So is exactly what we did with the online player accounts so we covered from video two. So I think it was episode two. We have an episode two of this series. So have a look at that. So that's just basically the player account. Where I said before that that would, and then that one does exactly the same again. But you should make and use a tag. So the tag itself is defined when you enter the lobby. So we'll cover that in a second. So in fact, we'll go and have a look at it now. So you can see this here, it says start game. So there is an area above this where there's uh, where there's barrier blocks and it's looking for players that enter that area. As soon as the player enters that area, it tags them as playing the game and then it teleports them into the maze so that they can begin playing. This over here will then check to see which any of those players that have that tag and then it sort of updates the game to say there's a person playing. So as you can see in the bottom of the scoreboard there it says playing zero, in lobby zero, all time player zero. 
Now the actual commands for all of these, they're just all basic scoreboard add commands. It's just basically setting everything up to be default. But once that's done, you then have just the player counts that are checking. So all they are just the same player counts that we had from the first thingies. They've just all got different names for the different titles and stuff. So that creates all of these things here. The only one that isn't run by the player count is that all-time players, which is just a simple scoreboard value, which is added on the lobby here. So obviously we add the tag maze playing. So that will then allow the other player count that's tracking for the maze playing to update and show that somebody's playing. This will then TP them into the maze. And then it adds a one to the all time player count. And that'll just keep track of it. We'll use that value to then track how many players have played. And then once so many players have played, we'll have another command block that'll swap it out, which we'll not cover in today's. We'll use that as like um as a, in a different video to cover that. And that's how the lobby itself is controlled. It's there's not a lot to it. There's three command blocks. Tag, teleport, update a scoreboard value. And that's all it does. And then you have two here. So if we turn these on because I always have these on switches so I can turn them on and off and this is just basically then adding the same thing as we did in the online player accounts from the first from those videos it will just simply run this chain and it'll update the values on the screen and if we want to actually show those in practice let's go back up so as you can see up here if we enter the lobby the lobby count has updated if we exit again, we can see that it's gone back to zero. So this is how it then tracks the lobby. You might probably think, well, how, why do you want some statistics for the lobby? But I don't want the game to swap out while there's players in here playing or sat in the lobby waiting to play. Because uh, that can be a bit disorientating, especially if they're in the side playing. I can't guarantee the safety at that point, what happens when we're storing in new structures and stuff. So I need these counts to make sure that we can track the players. But once the players are tracked, as long as all these values are zero, we can then make it spawn in a different maze and so on and stuff like that it's just for safety things but in terms of the actual entering the maze then as I said before there's the barrier blocks the command block that we've got underneath it that runs on that repeat will detect this area for anyone entering it so if we walk in as you can see we are now in the maze obviously the the value the notification on the top of the screen won't be there in the end once we finish building the gap we'll turn all these notifications off so people don't see those but as you can see now we're in here we can't go back there's no way of going back in now, but you can still see everybody in there. So you can say hi and wave to them. And as you can see, the playing count is now updated on the side as well. When it's time to leave the maze, this is just one way of doing it. The actual maze itself, because the base itself is going to change, the conditions on how you leave this maze will change. So what I've done for the purpose of testing is I've just stuck this command block here. Uh, this one's right. And all that is simply doing is looking to see if there's any players above it. And if it is, it tags it with a tag saying that they won. And then the exit control will be what then takes you over and takes you out of the maze. So any time in the maze, you're just simply using tags to tag players for the different scenarios. And then the different scenarios are being picked up and brought to this exit. And then this is where it controls whether they win, whether they lose, and so on and so forth. So for a one, as you can see here, all this is simply doing is it's on repeat, unconditional, TP anyone that's been tagged with the tag maze one in the above area. So that's in here. And then it'll run the command chain. Gives you a nice little title telling you that you've won. Now this little subtitle, we covered this as well with the, the welcome title in the first video to show you how to, to bring that up on the screen. And then at this point, we're now actually physically updating the tokens that we created, uh, adding the player. So each player that's in there, so, so let's say the three players enter this area into the winning area, all three players will be given one token. At this point, we now need to make sure that they're no longer defined as playing the game. So we do that by removing the tag, maze playing. So again, using the use of the execute command at A. All these coordinates that you see in here are actually just in here. So what happens with the U1 scenario is it TPs any players into this block here. And for the let you lose players, it TPs them to this block here. And the two command chains detect which side the players are on 
So depending on that, which side will depend on which element is used. So in this case, one is on the left, lose is on the right. At this point, once you remove all these two tags, as you can see, I'm no longer playing the maze. And we're no longer maze one. That's to stop the command block from repeating again and ending up in an endless cycle, giving us loads of money. So we need to remove that tag as well. That's gone. At that point, there's no point in doing any more on that chain. That chain has ended. So you think, how does the player leave this area in the end? Well, there's just a simple exit on here, on repeat. This one might look a bit daunting because we're using the execute command twice. So what we're saying here is execute for all players that don't have the tag maze lost. And that will then windle down anyone with the maze lost tag already in there. And then we have another one that says execute at A in the same place again for any players that have maze 1. This will then see to make sure. So after each chain that we've had, we remove the tag maze 1 and remove the tag maze lost. So at this point it says, well, no one's got a tag anymore in this area. You shouldn't be in here. TPG straight out of the door. So to put that into actual practice, if we use the maze one, there, you did it. Well done. Here's one token. And we have now one. And as you can see, we're no longer playing, so the playing tag is updated. All-time play count still at one. And if we just check out our balance, you can see we've now got one token. So what happens when we lose then? Well, let's just enter the maze again. So let's say we're in the maze and we get lost. In the actual levels of the maze that I'm making, there'll be little stations everywhere. Let's say, are oh, you lost? Stand on this pressure plate to leave, and you'll basically get tagged with a tag. So if we go tag, add, maze, lost. So as soon as we get tagged with this, the lost command chain will pick it up. And we are told, you was lost, but you are rescued. Yay! And as you can see, you've now been thrown straight back out of the maze again. But this time we don't have any new tokens, we weren't given anything, we were just kicked out because we were lost. So if we look at that command chain, it's exactly the same as the other one before. It's looking for anybody with the tag lost, it teleports them into that little square area. Goes through exactly the same process again with the titles. Subtitle. But instead of giving them the money, it skips that, there's no command block for that. All it's doing now is just removing the tags as we did before, exactly the same thing. And that's it. That's how you can control the lobby and the exit of a maze via command box. Simple and easy to set up. It's all things we've covered before in the previous episodes. It's just amalgamating them all together to create this nice little chain. And then we've got this nice little creation. Now, these little stats on the side as well. So in future, we can cycle between these so that we got the online player accounts. We can add in other different player accounts into that and we can cycle through them and things like that. There's so many things we can do in here just to make it look really cool later on down the line. But for the time being, this is really good now. So we've now got the start of our game. We've now got a lobby and exit control for it. We've got statistics for it so that we can use this to control the game more. It's going to be absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much for watching the video and remember to like and subscribe to the channel. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye.